Thank you. Um, um, yeah, so in this talk, I'd like, I would like to talk about how we reconstruct dynamic generic networks from single cell quantum accessibility and also transactional information. Um, so here uh, we are using single cell data to reconstruct generic networks for several reasons. So first, uh, it provides a huge statistical power gain in the cost. In the bulk area, you might need to sequence hundreds of individuals to get a network. That is typically at the consortium level for single cell because each cell acts an individual sample. Actually, you may only need one individual, or even just from the dish, you could create a genome, you can reconstruct a genome network. Also, with single cells, you can also show some set of processes this, that might be hidden when you average uh, the cells together with bulk. And also, because you can select the cells after doing sequencing, you can also find cell type specific or dynamic uh, gene review networks. Um, also, we have uh, different uh, measurements of each individual cells, allowing us to, to have different aspects of the view, and hopefully allowing us to further improve the reconstruction accuracy. The goal in this talk is to uh, reconstruct dynamic gene review networks from these two data modalities, and also to understand how transfer factors function and how they vary in differentiation and in disease. Um, gene reality network reconstruction has been a question for quite some time, many years, and there are known challenges here. Uh, we only use one modality, it might be hard to distinguish the general regulation versus several outside scenarios. And also, when you, uh, and also uh, because you, when you sequence the cell, you typically need to kill them, and therefore people typically and maybe implicitly assume that they are already in a steady state when being measured. And this gives rise to, uh, for example, steady state models, for example, Bayesian networks, and also uh, regression based models as well. And however, in, in these models, they cannot, for example, account for feedback loops or detection noise. And single cell data further adds to these existing challenges with their sparsity, amplifying some of the challenges of it. So, in our method dictus, we're trying, while we look at the generative networks, we're also trying to address some of these challenges. So first, when you look at, when you try to reconstruct cell type specific gene reality network, we first take the subset of cells we're interested in. And because we take, have two data modalities, we first use a single cell ataxic data to perform transfer factor footprinting to locate where, which region each transfer factor tend to bind, and therefore more likely which gene they are more likely to regulate. This gives rise to the transfer factor binding network, which, all, which will provide information on, on how to orient the causality. And, mean, and then we incorporate the single cell RNA seq data uh, to, uh, with the stochastic process model, which is a kinetic model, uh, to refine the edges. And this will ensure that we have an actual regulatory effect uh, from these factors. Specifically, the term factor footprinting it, uh, provides, uh, in first, the footprints, which are much narrower regions within the peaks, and uh, that's the transfer factors that are likely to bind because they can show the reduced. Uh, prompting accessibility when transfer factors actually bind there. And for the stochastic process model, we actually create, uh, we, we create a, a, a stochastic differential equation mo to model the transcranoid rate of the, uh, each gene with the gene reference network and also other kinetic parameters. The, all these parameters together determine the steady state distribution of all the genes together and from which the single cell RNA read counts are sampled. In this case, uh, uh, because this is a generative process from the kinetic to the kinetic parameter to the recounts, uh, we can actually, uh, after observing the recounts, can use them to infer all the kinetic parameters, including the gene network. In this case, because we, don't, we uh, model the transfer rate on the steady state expression level directly, and uh, our network is able to capture uh, feedback loops. And also, because uh, we can uh, directly account for the single cell RNA seq detection noise with uh, the modeling process. So here we compare our approach with existing approaches uh, to reconstruct a uh, genome network from single cell data that also accounts for transfer factor binding information. Uh, I would like, uh, there are lots of differences uh, between them, uh, but here I would like to mention that uh, our method can uh, account for cell type specific property accessibility and transfer factor binding information, and uh, we use kinetic models that can capture uh, feedback loops and also uh, uh, detection noise in single cell. Uh, we perform um, several uh, benchmarks, for example, transfer factor binding uh, benchmark with chipset data, also from perturbation experiments that we also consider indirect effects of feedback loops. But here I would like to mention uh, the evaluation on cell type specificity and reproducibility. This is because we're more interested in the comparative analysis between the junior, junior networks. Well, therefore, if we want, uh, we want to, uh, for such as the uh, cell type specific networks and dynamic networks, 
In this case, we really want the cell, uh, network to be different between different cell types, and that corresponds to the cell type specificity of the networks. And meanwhile, we want to see that the edges uh, that differ are really genuine coming from genuine coming from the cell type specificity instead of uh, some variations in the data or the model itself. And therefore, this corresponds to the reproducibility. Specifically, uh, for each cell type, we randomly split the cells into two parts and reconstruct genomic networks for each of them. We compare the sim uh, gene net genomic network similarity uh, between and across different cells, uh, within and between different cell types. Uh, we decompose the contributions of GRN similarity in, in, into several components. One is, uh, one is the slope you can see here, which comes from uh, the number of cells you, uh, you get or the amount of information. And the other contribution comes from whether uh, the uh, cells are coming from the same cell type, and therefore the network should be more similar, corresponding to cell type specificity. We used two data sets uh, from human blood and male skin, and we both found uh, our method has consistently higher cell type specificity and reproducibility. And this allows DIXA to be more suitable for these comparative GRN analysis. And then we moved on, moved on to the real data set, uh, to have a look at what we can do with them. In this case, it's a blood differentiation data set that's already published and uh, separately uh, quantified single cell RNA and taxic data. So the first question we asked was, um, uh, people typically um, model uh, the activity of transfer factors with their expression level just for simplicity in the high uh, throughput measurements. But however, we know that mRNA level is quite far from the actual activity, which is directly binding to DNA with the protein. And, and therefore, we're wondering if we can directly uh, quantify transfer factor activity uh, with, their, with the general network, uh, specifically the number of targets. Maybe we can account for these kinds of uh, effects, for example, when they form a different uh, dimer with a different partner. And this is, uh, can then compare how, or whether first we can, we can see whether they can find some new, uh, some existing biology and whether it can find a new biology that's not shown just looking at their mean expression levels. And therefore, in this case, we first reconstruct cell types of the gene record networks for each cell type. And then instead of looking for expression marker genes, which are typically the first step of single cell data analysis right after clustering, we look at regulation marker genes based on how many targets each, each transfer factor has. We can find indeed, um, we can recover many very well-known transfer factors that cell type specific. For some of the gutters, tau one KLF, the Icaros, um, Tax5, and so on. And meanwhile, uh, with gene record networks, we can find uh, individual regulations that are not, of course, not shown in their main expression levels as shown on the right. We then move on to a more target analysis, picking one or two cell types. In this case, when we look at the uh, red blood cells, the erythro cells, we can perform differential regulation in comparison to differential expression. So in this case, we can see how, how many targets each transfer factor has and varies between the two cell types. So we know that if you look at them, uh, we know there are several genes, for example, this TFCP2 and RF1, uh, they hardly show any differential expression signal, but they are really strong in differential regulation. Um, actually, these genes uh, regulate uh, the pathway that produces uh, the, uh, the protein that transfers uh, blood, in your, uh, transfers, transfers oxygen in your blood, and therefore, they are really specific and important for every thought. And therefore, we could recover transfer factors uh, that only show up in differential regulation, but not in differential expression. We also notice there are significant um, uh, differences in their uh, uh, differential regulation, differential expression pattern. And that's why we could integrate their local changes to get a better ranking to show which one um, uh, for which cell type. Uh, with the gene network networks, we can also look at individual uh, transfer factors, what are their targets, and individual regulations um, as well. Uh, however, when we look at static or cell type specific networks, it can be subject to biases. For example, all these clusters are just artificial, but uh, differenti uh, differentiation is a continuous process. And also the reconstruction method could be subject to biases, for example, due to not the imbalance in the number of cells. And therefore here we use dynamic network uh, to try to get um, uh, to avoid these issues. Specifically, uh, when on, on the right, you can see uh, we have a trajectory um, inferred uh, for course differentiation process. We can create moving windows along the trajectory uh, and reconstruct a specific static networks for each cell subset. 
and then we connect them together with Gaussian kernel smoothing to get a dynamic JRN along the pseudo time uh, differentiation process. So here we show it with everything lineage, as you can see on the top left, as, a, as a no, uh, the cell substrate you choose gradually moves from the progenitors in the center to the erythroid on the top left. Actually, you can see how the expression level changes for some of the known, uh, well, well known cancer factors on the left, and also their regulatory activity in the middle, which is the log target count, as well as the individual regulation strength from cancer factor to specific targets, as the heat map here as well. Um, on the top right, you can also see the differential. Uh, regulation versus differential expression local changes. And here you can show better, you can see a better agreement uh, between these two, possibly because uh, we can overcome some of the biases uh, that are in the cell type specific uh, GRN analysis. Um, on, on the rightmost uh, uh, column, we also show, um, we can also see how a transfer factor might regulate its uh, putative genes uh, and how the activity gradually increases as or decreases and the self differentiates. And this is, of course, another example. The B cell lineage, we group the transfer factors depending on the stage uh, they are active. Um, here we, we can see some of the known ones um, that are active or declining and early or mid or relatively late stage. Um, here I would like to focus on one particular transfer factor, which is FOXO1. It shows some growth. You can see it's um, in orange. You can see its regulatory activity it really follows a um, um, like roller coaster kind of behavior up and down and up like that. Uh, actually, the source of one is really well known for in the B cell development that can uh, that has different roles and different stages of B cell development. And with gene recognition network, we can capture them uh, quite well. However, if you just look at their expression, it's just flat. You know, it's increasing in the beginning and then it's flat. So therefore, with especially with dynamic gene recognition network, we can capture the time resolved uh, regular activity shifts. It's not captured in expression level. Uh, besides the um, um, the in-depth analysis or validation of the known transfer factors. We can also perform discovery of transfer factors with the regulatory activity curve, which is what you just saw, how the its number target changes as the pseudo time uh, increases or as the self differentiates. So in this case, we can use simple geometric measures like area under the curve or between two curves or the distance between the initial and final state uh, in the uh, target count to define three uh, metrics here that was the terminal log code chain from beginning to end, was the transient log code chain to only happens in between, in between but not and the terminal states, and also switching time, basically when the transfer factor uh, activates or deactivates. So in this case, we use these metrics to, to rank the transfer factors and we indeed find uh, several different modes, including when transfer factors start to activate and self differentiates or inactivate, I can see on the uh, bottom left, uh, as well as transient modes and it goes up and, and, and decreases and, as well as transient down. And if we apply this for three, all the three different lineages, you can see that indeed it can capture very well known transfer factors and therefore uh, justifies its potential in TF discovery. So to conclude, um, we developed a method dictus trying to reconstruct and analyze cell type specific and dynamic genetic networks from single cell RNA attack. Uh, data sets. Uh, we also try to address some of the traditional challenges in network inference, including uh, how to orient the causality with data, data modalities and how do you account for feedback loops by using uh, with uh, the by modeling the transcriptional rates and also detection noise with progress programming as well. So here we try to use GRNs to directly quantify transfer factor activity and uh, which can show some novel biology or or biology is hidden by just looking at their mean expression levels. Also, when we move to dynamic from the static or cell type specific GRN, we can also allow, we can also have time resolved discovery and also in-depth investigation of individual transfractors, individual regulations, and it, uh, it doesn't suffer from the biases from artificial clusters as well. In the end, I would like to acknowledge um, a this is a, a project that with contribution and help from many people, especially Luca and Nikos. Uh, we really clamor extensively on, on this project a lot, and it's very great pleasure working with them. Um, and we also have we just 
actually this pro uh, this project is being finalized and we just released the code as you can see here the software so uh, we really want to hear your feedbacks in the study or in the software and so we can improve thank you That was impressive. Um, just to, to grasp a bit what, where the information comes from. So, um, how does it compare to doing a simple footprint analysis and comparing the uh, occupancy of the binding sites to the expression of the artist? Which so, is already great, but just to, to get there. Um, I suppose you mean if you only use quantum accessibility information, right? So, in this case, sure. So, um, However, it's the transfer voice that we may bind to a particular site or near a particular gene, but it would be hard to find out whether that uh, binding is really leading to a change or expression of the target gene. Uh, therefore, we hope with, you know, uh, with the R information, you can really find, as you can see here on the left, uh, can really find, uh, hope to find the actual uh, binding that have a real replicate effect on target gene. Okay, so do you find surprising things on these downstream handles? You, you highlighted a lot of differences between expression of the TF and its occupancy. Mm -hmm. But what about them is uh, downstream impact? Oh, so yes, indeed. I didn't have time to explain, but here, because we can capture the feedback loops and we are have a kinetic models, actually, we can analytically compute what is the steady state effect. So it can compute, it's similar to propagation to the second and third step. But however, because this is a continuous network, it can account for loops. It, it actually involves a slightly different computation. And in this case, we also have the benchmarks here comparing uh, different uh, methods. Uh, you can see on the top right, when you use perturbation data, actually it captures the direct and indirect effects. So we compare the, these total effects to show that we have a slightly better performance than existing methods as well. Thank you. Great talk. Um, so as you know, like lots of related transcription factors have similar motifs, which makes it difficult to unambiguously assign like a transcription factor to a footprint, right? Does does the single cell RNA seq data that you disambiguate are you explicitly trying to disambiguate um, paralysis factors that way? Uh, we believe so. Actually, we haven't really really shown them specifically, but we did some uh, a lot of uh, benchmarks here. You can see and the uh, bots well at top right as well internally with different model parameters for example whether we use peaks or we use footprints and also you know um, how do we handle the transfer term information as well so we really check them but not really show specifically if we only use you know uh single cell taxi data you know how and for these similar transfer factor and motifs how we can really show but we hold with gene expression and we expect with gene expression they can really show this I have a clarification about the dynamics. So we talked about dynamic switching context, like in the beginning we talked about modeling steady state expression. Where is the dynamic icon? Is that the Google gun or uh, Google Sheet? Also have dynamic when you have something that is moving state. Mm -hmm. I, I I assume you you mean um one is the uh, here I try to call it the kinetic process so that I you know we model the transcriptional rate of each gene with the expression level of other genes through the gene repeat network so here uh, this is um, the kinetic modeling and we we assume like other um, steady state models that the observation is still in the steady state so. Therefore, here we don't say dynamic in this part, but for dynamic, we really mean how the network changes uh, over the differentiation process. Um, so it's a steady state model that we want to make the relationship between regulators and the Yes. Oh, um, so, sorry, could you, could you say again? So you're assuming that uh, the relationship between the regulators and the audience is framed as observed in that steady state. Yeah, you're not more than oh, so so specifically speaking, we have a stochastic differential equation. Or it's a kinetic process, but we allow time to go to infinity, so then we reach the steady state. We give a distribution of steady state that is actually observed. So that time, initially, the model has a time, but it because it goes to infinity, and, and therefore in the observation, it's, it's still under the assumption of steady state. 
but we can chat later.